May teacup big bad blobby. What's up, guys? What's up, dude? I'm going to die. Why are you gonna die? Are you? Oh, oh, because of all the all the the smoke, right? The air quality is currently two hundred. That that's not good. And it's mm, it's very much not good. It's thundering, so it's gonna make it worse. So what? It's gonna like take all the ash out and put it on the streets and stuff. That's no good. Is it gonna make it better? Or it's gonna make it two hundred times worse. You know that this this happened. This was a similar thing that <clears throat> happened. California. Yeah, right. We had this in California. I remember. It's it's weird. What it's it's wildfires in Canada. The California now? wildfires. The yeah, now it's Canada. Can I didn't. Canadian I thought Canada was immune to everything. Yeah, I thought I thought Canada was dope. Yo, Rampton, what's up with this dog? What's up? With, what's up with Canada? <laughs> we love Canada. It's we the best. Love Canada. Um. Oh, here. Let me get make sure Hypatia can come up and speak later if you if you want if she wants. Um. Yeah, we had this in California. Actually, we had um we had some wildfires that ended up uh, getting really close to my apartment. Actually, I remember at the time I had to go like evacuate my my ex girlfriend or well, my girlfriend at the time uh, lived um kind of closer north to where the fires were, and she had like broken her foot at work from like tripping in high heels, so she couldn't like move anything. So I had to go like rescue her and like put all her stuff in a car and then drive it further south to where I was to make sure that. The fires, the fires didn't, luckily didn't burn down any of the apartments by her, but, like, the smoke was, like, really bad, I remember. Yeah, that stuff's nasty. Nasty. Well, when's it, when's it gonna cl clear? Do they, do they tell you, Teacup? They tell you when it's, like, safe to go back out? Curious. No, but, but, <clears throat> here's, we had to go to school today, it wasn't that bad, it was only... Like one twenty at the moment. Oh here, here. They're, they're... Got home from school with one sixty nine. Currently it's one ninety two. Okay. Oh damn, this when is. I, uh... Oh, this is so weird. Look at this pattern. Do you see how this pattern? Like, okay. What? I... Welcome. Free access. Yeah. I'm glad there's free access to this. Yeah. Do you see this? What? Like it? It shoots out this way and then it goes this way. Like what? Yeah, that's we some see. weird. That's some weird fluid dynamics there, right? Oh, that's the Navier Stokes thing. Yeah, it's a Navier Stokes. Yeah, yeah. Isn't this this a uh, this? There is a there is math to this. Yeah, that's kind of cool. No, like, uh, it's not only math to it. If you solve it, so you get so a million dollars. Yeah, that's right. Math. Yeah, I think well, I want you to make happy the next ramet. What do you mean the next ramet? What do you make the next like, ramet? Oh, let's get make oh. him the next instructor. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I had a really good discussion uh, with Hypatia, uh, I think it was two days ago, about ideas for, like, doing a cool little summer series, you know, where we start teaching some more advanced math topics and whatnot. Um, Yo, I'll take it. I want yeah, to do it. Yeah, right? Wouldn't that be cool? That's dope. Um, and uh, I think I got your funding. Oh, did you? Oh, shit. Sorry, I haven't checked on my DMs, dude. I've been so busy today. Um... Let me see that. Yeah, like this, uh, this fund is linked to something called Topos Institute, who are really cool people. They are dedicated in helping oh, awesome. uh, mathematicians. Is this the survive wait, Survival and Flourishing Fund? Is this what we're talking about? This thing right yeah. now? Yeah, yeah, that's the one. Ah. And uh, it's uh, you have. I think we, you have a little bit more than two weeks to apply for the current. Season. Dude, oh, this is dope. Oh, thank you, dude. Thank you, man. How, how, and, uh, how did you how did you find the, this Hypatia? Are, are these some friend of yours? Friends of yours? Remember or the uh, yeah. Remember the person I told you who has connection with rich people. Okay. Including someone who, uh, whose name starts with a E. Well, uh, anyways. Yeah. Just, you know, <laughs> Shh. <laughs> yeah. We can't so get people too excited. Yeah, just the uh, try to apply for it, and uh, I think I know someone from Topos Institute. Uh, yeah. Be, and I know they have oh, funds for, for example, for like formal scientists or potential yeah. aspiring formal scientists who are underprivileged uh, or marginalized or things like that. Awesome, dude! This is perfect, Hypatia. I appreciate this. Thank you. I will. I will do this. Yeah. It's also apparently and, uh, LA Tech Week in Los Angeles. I just found this out from like one of my. Uh, VC friends. Um, so there are all these meetings this week that they're doing um, with these big, you know, VCs and one all these like basically rich donors and stuff. And so I may try to show up to some of these meetups to 
talk about what we're doing and see if there's any interest, you know. And also, I can send you my Vita, like, I just updated it, and then, like, if you see a mathematician, especially algebra geometer, just yeah. uh, shove my Vita to them, and then they will have a good impression on you. Oh, nice. Yeah, oh, did you emailed it to me? Did you email it to me, your 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 CV? Or No, like, uh, I can, uh, let me see. I can, uh, I can, uh, maybe later. I can maybe later, you're good, you're good, you're good, yeah, you're good, yeah, that's always good. Like, uh, I don't want you to show it. So yeah, let me not show it on the stream. Yeah, yeah, that would be bad. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. No no doxing, people. Uh, but, yeah. Uh, 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 Sam brings up a good point. Oh, when are we getting new sub badges? I do need to make new sub badges for you guys because you guys have gone past the 12. Let me think. Let me see, actually, what, what Twitch does for... Uh, I think the next one is 24, honestly. Let me see. Uh, Twitch. Oh, wait, is here. So, like, uh, yeah. that's the person who asked about the analysis problem. Yes, right? that is the person that asked about the analysis problem. Yeah, you can talk talk to Teacup about it. Do you find it interesting? Yeah, Teacup, do you find it interesting, dog? Teacup. Oh, he said he might lose power. Why is he losing power? What? I see him in the chat. He said he might lose power. All right. Well, we'll see. Uh, How's it going? What's up, Ramton? Good to see you, dude. Thank you. Um, are you are you surviving the smoke? Are you on the side where the smoke is? Yeah. Uh, well, I am. I'm not getting <laughs> smoke much, but it, the weather feels like you're breathing through sawdust. Ooh. Like, it's, it's That's not pretty... good. Yeah, it's pretty like yesterday. Like I felt like in my mouth I was getting like almost like dust the whole time. Ew, dude! What? And, like today is still bad, and hopefully uh, it'll be better by like the next few days. But yeah, it's it's not great. But because you're in Canada, and I know Hypatia is in New York, and Teacups in Virginia, mm -hmm. so you guys are all in the, I guess the thick of it, basically, right? Yeah, it's horrible. Like uh, the sky <laughs> is yellow, just like Beijing. And uh... yeah, right, Hypatia, you're like I escaped this shit. What? Why is it following me here? <laughs> oh yeah, and uh, even worse, I have previous pulmonary, uh, like pulmonary conditions, like sure. surgical pulmonary embolism. Oh so fuck! This thing is making me just yeah. It's not good. I got you, dude. That's that's yeah, that's like, unfortunate. I heard that they said get uh, air purifiers and wear like N95 masks. Wear N95s. Think, wow. Yeah, I don't think N95 is necessary because these particles are way too big. They're big. N95. Yeah, it's like ash, right? Yeah. Uh, or it's like it literally feels like. Uh, I mean, I, I don't know how many people in here have worked at a carpentry, but I used to like uh -huh. do carpentry stuff when I was in like high school for like extra projects. Oh, that's cool. But, like, but. Uh, yeah, that's what it smells like. It smells like wood. And what what like, what started this thing? Like, did someone just um, light a forest on fire? Like, what happened? No forest. Yeah, I, what I heard is a backyard. Some stupid person's. Some person just some them. backyard decided to light some shit on fire. Yeah. What? In Wait, I, I didn't realize. Yeah. Okay, that's what people dude, are hearing. Last year, last year, you guys had it with the whole gender reveal. It was reveal a gender party. reveal, dude. Dude, they got sued the <laughs> shit out of. <laughs> yeah. Well, like, I don't think you need to burn the fucking yeah, forest. Yeah, they don't need to burn the forest for a gender reveal. And then also, they they just destroyed, like, tons of, like, houses and stuff, dude. It was terrible. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. So. So so oh they think it was it was just it was just a person that's 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 super weird let's see that wait what let me see I mean, the ones on the west coast uh co close to Alberta mm -hmm. and all these stuff there's usually those fires every year like right every year the the BC and uh, British Columbia and like uh, Alberta stuff goes on burning but like this yeah, is right by it. Quebec you're you're right around here right aren't you in like yeah. yeah you're right right over here dude what wow. Yeah, it's a little bit worse to the east of us. Uh huh. Like you see Toronto there, we're like kind of at the bottom of the whole thing. Okay. Um, but yeah, like I don't know what's going on, but um, it's interesting that it pools around here, right? And then I, you know, I was I was talking with Hypatia, and Hypatia was saying, "Oh, Navier Stokes, right?" Because it seems to do this channel, right? There's like this slipstream channel that passes right into you know all these cities and whatnot that that. You know, why? Why is, for instance, northwestern Pennsylvania safe? Like, what? What's what's going on there? <laughs> what, Interesting. What, yeah. Right. It could stick to particles, like probably areas with higher smog. 
Has. Right. It almost looks like a highway, right? Doesn't this almost look like this is following following a highway? Yeah, it could be. I mean, I think uh, it would make a lot of sense if it was kind of following that pattern. Yeah. That's super nuts. That's crazy. Okay. Well, yeah, I remember when this happened in California. That was my breaking point for me buying an air purifier because uh, – I I was I was like man dude this is bad like I can't go to sleep this is terrible and then I I sleep now with an air purifier all the time and I no longer have respiratory problems it's interesting actually I used to think it was bullshit but uh, I I highly recommend if you if you don't already have one and you don't go to sleep with one uh, I don't know like the, the the air has a lot of bad shit in it um, let me find if I find what I got need to go Amazon. This is the one I got. It was the Winix. Oh, of course it's out of stock, dude. I bet everyone's like bought the shit out of this right now. <laughs> um, but it it was this. It this it's. I have two of them now, actually. Um, I have Winx. one. How big is this? Not too big. It's about the size of um a desktop. I would say maybe twice maybe twice the height of a desktop. Um, Winix. Winix. Air, air, air purifier. Yeah. This one is. Uh, let me get the specs on it. Guys, it's a brand new Apple Mac. Yeah, dude, imagine Apple s s s s starts selling an, an, air, an air purifier for like $10,000. Uh, no, it looks exactly <laughs> like the Apple like toaster thing. It does. It actually kind of looks like the, the, the Mac Pro or something. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it's not that big. I'm trying to think. I, I actually got, it was the You're Winix. In California. Did yeah. you by ch any chance have already tried the Apple Vision? Try the what? Uh, have I what? Sorry. The Apple Vision. The that's a, a AR thing. That oh, the Apple, Apple Vision. Vision. Oh no, I haven't. I, I mean, can you try it? Can you like? Can you go to the Apple Store? Do they have it? Yeah, I think so. They invited the media and some random. Oh, people I, I, it. you know, I should, I should start like trying to flex my like media creds to get more stuff. Oh, this one's still on sale. Oh, and there's a forty dollar discount. <laughs> Yeah, if y'all got Costco, dude, go. And actually, this one uses the cheaper filters too. The C five five five. I know this one. I have this one. C five five five. I think I have to get it from Amazon. Here, here, I'll put I'll put it in the chat for you guys. This is I have two of these. It has plasma wave cleaning technology. Uh, but yeah, let's see if they have it. Amazon Winix C five five. Uh, C five five. Because I also have to get it on dot ca. Oh, okay. Yeah, Jesus, they're trying yeah. to they're trying to sell this thing for like two hundred bucks. Like, chill. Oh wow. Yeah, they're a pretty good brand. Um, their filters last a decent amount of time. Um, and I, I used to get this thing where every every couple every every like winter season and whatnot, I'd always get like some weird respiratory respiratory cough, and my dad would have to like prescribe me antibiotics, which is like not a good thing for the whole you know resistant diseases thing. But yeah. now, uh, since having the air purifier in my bedroom, I, I, I don't get it anymore. It's super weird. I don't get it. But I guess okay. I guess air purifying does work. Good. Yeah. So that's what I would recommend. You know, go get an air purifier, guys. You know, stay safe. Don't don't die, please. <laughs> uh, all right. Let's see. What else have we got in the chat? Uh, Ethan says, hello. What's up, Ethan? Good to see you, dude. Yes, I will. I will look. At, did you DM me the question, or you dude, make sure you put the questions in the screenshots so I can get to them? Um, noise, noise. Hello. Yeah. What's up? Yeah. Noise, noise, dude. I super appreciate noise, noise. Have you seen all the work noise, noise has been doing in office hours, dude? Uh, let me pull it up. It's 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 uh. I guess noise, noise was was teaching uh, Jamarcus calculus, like just all of this. Uh, where is this? Yeah. He, uh, he even gave him like a homework assignment or something and had him do it. And I thought this was really cool. And look, and he and and Jamarcus responded to it. Uh, super cool. I appreciate this. I appreciate, this, especially like writing all this up and whatnot. This is this is this is awesome. Noise, noise. I like that. Um, yeah, this is similar to what like I'd like to do over the summer is to have courses like this that you know interested students, such as Jamarcus are, you know, can go through and learn some higher level math than you're used to learning you know this is all this is all great stuff for you guys uh what's up rip Log? good to see you ethan says i sent you an email oh don't don't send me an email <laughs> i can't pull my email up here <laughs> well that's such an email don't send me an email yeah what an email dude how do you have do you have my email <laughs> gold i have an email your house little yeah. i have everything about you i have your password oh 
Yeah. Oh, Noise says, be careful on Amazon. You dox your postal code. Yeah. Unfortunately, I my entire home address, Noise, is doxed because it's literally my – it's the address associated with the, Ah, yes. Hello. Yeah. You you can you can literally get my home address by just looking up the the business documents for my I have my nonprofit. Thing. So yeah yeah yeah. So I I I appreciate it. I I'm not worried about getting doxed. I I'm already doxed. <laughs> I'm permanently doxed. Go. I'm gonna show up to your house and you're gonna die in that closet. I know. I know. Please, please. Yeah. It's it's uh oh one sec. It's getting hot in here too, man. This summer. Uh okay. All right. Let's start doing some questions. Get some stuff done. Let me see. Oh, also, they uh, they let me pick my Discord username today. I was super happy oh, about that. Oh, you finally got that. I got it. I got the notification today. Yeah, they said it. I got it in I the. Don't know. I got it in the app. Is what I did. How do I get it? I don't know. It'll pop up. I just literally got a notification that said, "Hey, Doctor Gold, it's time for you to pick your username." And I was like, "Can I have Doctor Gold?" And they said yes. And I was like, "Dope." My username probably isn't even available anymore. So I'm, I'm amazed Dr. Gold was available, honestly. I was kind of amazed by that. I was like, okay, that's dope. <laughs> uh, but I guess I've been on Discord for a while, and I, I, I have um, Nitro, so that's why. Um, you have Nitro. I do. Um, okay, Teacup, let's do your question first. I like your question here. I bet 20 bucks that I'm not going to be able to get any good username. Do you have Nitro? Did I do, did I no, buy you Nitro? I don't have. You never oh, bought me Nitro. I never bought you Nitro. Oh, okay. Well, I gotta buy you Nitro sometime, dude. Uh, okay. I'm not gonna get a good username anyway. I'm, well, like, I'm gonna be like Teacup four seven two one. Well, they actually they actually banned. They actually reserved a couple names. Uh, they actually reserved just the name Gold. Gold was was reserved. Um, there were a couple names uh, apparently in the list that you weren't allowed to like pick anyways because they're reserving them. So teacup maybe I think because they don't want people parking usernames. They so they don't want people taking like super obvious like I, I think anything that's one letter is also banned. Anything that's two letters is also banned. Someone already has teacup. Oh okay, okay. Well that's okay. Maybe you can be teacup. You can put um, periods, underscores, and numbers. I don't want to do. That. I know it's okay. Well, whatever. It, I need to think of a new it's, username. It's it's just it's just, it's just but no, it's just your username according to Discord, which no one actually ever uses. What you guys use are your display names, and your display names can be whatever, and so that's what shows up when you're in my server. This is just so if someone wanted to add you as a friend. Uh, Dude, but I still want a nice clean. Username. I know it is it is cool, but honestly, I I and this is something Noise was bringing up earlier because <laughs> I think Sam like added him as a friend, and Noise is like, why'd you friend me? And Sam's like, I don't know, man, you know. Uh, server stuff, Tarkov. I don't understand why we have friend requests in Discord because I guess there's some privacy setting that you can set that people can't message you unless you're in the same server or your friends. Um, but whatever. It uh, you know, it's cool. I got I got Doctor Gold. I'll wait. Maybe my alt account, the the streaming bot that I use to stream everything on the Discord. I hope that one gets to pick a username, and that one I'll probably take actual education or something. Or maybe one of you guys will take it first. Who knows. <laughs> <laughs> I am not going to get any good username. Uh, okay. All right. Let's see, Tika. Let's see your first question. What is the number of possible okay. permutations of eight objects taken three at a time? Ooh. Do you know how this works? This is actually a cool thing. This, oh. is, like, this is like probability, I think, or also like statistics, right? Yo. Yeah. Dude, this, is, this has to I'm do with... Yeah, this has to do with... Uh, I think it's NCR and NPR, right? this is yeah probably yeah where n is n is the like the number of things that you have uh like in the pool i guess and then this is for instance uh how many you pick out i'm trying to figure out if we're talking about the question if we're talking about gambling no, well i g this is related to gambling yeah, there's there's a lot of gambling uses a lot of this stuff. Yeah, you guys want to know? I love dude. Gambling. Noise says fuck statistics. <laughs> <laughs> noise, noise, dude. Noise, 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 noise. Chose chose violence this morning, dude. <laughs> I mean, I think I think statistics and uh, probability it becomes more fun when you see the world application. Yeah. Until, until I was done school, I didn't appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. It I, I appreciate it because um. You know, uh, it helps us. I, I think it's amazing that we've come up with ways to quantify what we're comfortable with being like, it's good enough or like it's close enough, you know. Um, st statistics, statistics gets this cool thing. Like if we have two groups of 
different people and we take the average height of each group and say like one group is six foot average and one group is five foot ten, we have a way, we have developed a math in order to determine, hey, is that six foot really different than that five foot ten or is that just like random error? Like how yeah. how different, I think that, that to me is so cool. I love that. Uh, I don't know how we came up with it, but <laughs> I get I, I guess I, it probably must be real at some point, right? Like yeah. that that bell curve had to come. That th does that come from like natural processes that we just like observed? Yeah, it's just uh, like laws of nature. Pretty much everything converges to a normal distribution eventually. Um, and but, yeah, that's just well, that's a good <laughs> question. So so how how did we come up with the normal distribution? Like. You know, did we measure just like flipping a coin a thousand times? We're like, okay, it looks like this. I know it, it's, oh, a, it's a it's a it, it's a tanch curve, isn't it? Isn't it a tanch hey, curve? I'll be right back. I know. Okay. Uh, no, it, it, oh it's a negative x hell? squared. Uh, e to the, e so to the like, negative x squared is that what it is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's the like what do you consider the Gaussian function as well? Okay. Um, like essentially, if you uh if you have so in order to get a normal distribution you need to have like a continuous uh what's it called you need to have like a continuous input mm -hmm. because you need to be measuring things that are measured continuously or okay. at least with you know what a lot of entry points where you can at least say it, it can be there's a lot of like um things to measure for like flipping a coin you only have two outcomes yeah that's true so like you actually wouldn't get um you yeah, wouldn't so noise, noise yeah noise is like yo binomial. that he's like yo bro that's binomial i'm like yeah you're right <laughs> but what if it was like the yeah. number of heads i get in a row that could be continuous right you know um that's no that's still binomial so like one thing that is continuous you can say like height right so okay if you look at the height or iq in like the population right you could have like any sort of um any sort of uh, uh i guess outcome mm -hmm. or input essentially because the the height could be anything and then the um the the, the depth to which it goes is infinite data. right you can have fractions of fractions of fractions that's what you're getting at. Yeah, pretty much and okay. then so what you would end up doing is that you would end up having um like a continuous uh probability and so the height of that it would be considered to be the frequency of things. Yep. So I'll, I'll, I'll draw something yeah, as yeah, yeah. well. Uh, so the normal distribution that you have is kind of looks like this. And then it's like a bell curve. Mm -hmm. And it has like a function. You can look it up, but it has e to the negative x squared. Uh, but it's like x over something, and then there's like a fraction. Yeah, there's got to be a, there's got to be an offset to it, right? There's got to be a horizontal yeah, shift. Yeah, and it's just because um, uh, I guess to to make sure that the graph like works a certain way, pretty much. Mm -hmm. uh, but like I mean, all of those are just scaling factors. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, so you have um, you have e to the power of negative. I guess the function e to the power of um, what is it? Negative one half times. Uh, sorry, I'm just looking it up. You're so good. You're x good. X minus mu over sigma mm -hmm. squared. Okay, that's the normalization. One, yeah, and then there's one over sigma square root of two pi, and this is f of x. All right. Right. And the, the whole reason for this is because, so you want to make sure that uh, this is centered around zero. Mm -hmm. So that's that X minus mu. That's what this comes from, yep. Yeah, so the mu is what we call the mean. Yep. The sigma is what we call the standard deviation. Yep. Standard which is different from standard yeah. error. I always I always get those two confused. Yeah, so the standard deviation is just the amount of variability. I guess that's right. how I like it. The amount of variability in your data. The standard error is like how much error you have in your mean. So that one, the, you have to understand the, um, uh, what's it called, central limit theorem for, for the uh, standard error to kind of make sense a little bit. 
Uh, but standard deviation, you can think about it as being the amount of variability in your data. So the bigger it is, the more variable your data is, sure. which means that it's going to be more spread out. Okay. So uh, when you're drawing this graph, you're scaling it by that sigma factor, essentially, just so that that sigma comes out to be um, like pretty much at around one sigma. If you go outwards from your center, mm -hmm. then you would get 68% of your data in that band. Right, yep. And then if you go two sigma out from one being negative, then you have 95% of your data or 96% of your data within, um, within that band. And so uh, the whole point of this one over sigma over two pi is so that your integral, when you integrate this from negative infinity to positive infinity, uh -huh. and you can see that because because we want to make sure that we have all inputs, mm -hmm. um, that's why we integrate from negative infinity to positive infinity. And we that has to equal to, to one. one. Yeah. Yeah. There has so to be a hundred percent chance of something happening. It's kind of a cool thing. Exactly. There. The negative infinity to positive infinity of e to the negative x squared. We can talk about this being uh, pi. Uh, or wait, is it pi or square root of pi? I think. Yeah. And we can talk about this as well. Like the the, the derivations for this is mm -hmm. like something right. And so that's where that you know square root of two pi comes from. I Sorry, see. This is zero to infinity. That's why it's pi. Okay. And then yeah, you need twice that going from negative infinity yeah, to zero. Twice yeah. that. And then this is like one of the functions that you know you would see a lot. And yeah, if you have negative infinity to positive infinity because it's a uh, even function, then uh, it's just going to be twice as big. Right, and right. There, that two square root of two pi comes from, and that sigma is because it's, there's a scale. There's a yeah on, on the x basically. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So, um, so yeah, that's normal distribution. Nice. Yeah. And and yeah, I I I. I Noise Noise says he's going to sleep because he says he says I love I love listening to Rabbit but stats, I write square there in my work of pi because it's just funny. Oh well, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, this is this yeah this is an awesome like cool intro. I I wonder do you know why for instance they picked it to be sixty eight percent between between one and two no, sigma? It's just how it works out. Just how it works out. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. Yeah, yeah. It's just the. Uh... How it works out to be um, like pretty much the math works out. Yeah, and so like the the two sigma. I mean, we talk about how things, how significant we want things to be. Exactly. So we typically, when we are doing that, I think it's actually one point nine six. By the way, to get ninety five percent. Right. There's a thing called like a Z score. Um, yep. Z score. Yep. We, we get essentially it's just the associated value that we need to go out, given that your mean is zero and your standard deviation is one so you end up scaling everything like shifting your graph first then you then you squeeze it by a certain factor yeah and you have like this one general normal distribution which they call it actually the standard normal distribution um oh wait i think i got my tablet working oh nice okay try logging nice. on see if you can write but yeah so the standard normal distribution is a normal distribution with mu equals to zero where your uh -huh. mean is zero uh -huh. and your sigma is equals to one so your standard deviations right so if you have any sort of data if you take every point and you subtract your mean from it then it gets shifted so wherever your mean is is now would be zero and then you divide that by sigma it it uh shrinks everything by a factor of sigma so now your sigma is equals to one and so when you do this, you can refer to like a table. And the whole point of this is to not have to recalculate things every time. Right. Um, and you end up with this standard normal distribution. And then if you go out 1.96 on either side, then you get 95% of your data to mm -hmm. be within that band. And okay. so this is what we consider things to be significant. So if we find things to be um 90% likely that it belongs to something. Mm -hmm. And we say, oh, this is probably part of that. Yeah, it's not, not just random. That the chance of something belonging to something else is very low. So, for example, you can think of it as this. Like, 
uh, let's say you know the average height in US. Yeah. Right. And you want to, let's say, pick like a population or pick like a person from that population and and see whether that person could belong uh, to the general US population. And if you pick that, per let's say you pick a random person and depending on their height, you find out that there is maybe a 3% uh, chance that they belong to the US population. You say three is too small. So th there's a good chance that this person is from a different country. Ah, but yeah. yeah. They, we find that it's a 6% chance. Then we say 6% is not uh, you know, unlikely enough yeah. for us to say that this person is not from the U.S. Right. So, we with six percent, we'll say um, this person still could be uh, part of the U.S. population, but um, but there may be. Uh, yeah, there's not strong enough uh, evidence to say that that they come from a completely different group. Is what yeah. it is. Okay, so I've decided I hate statistics. No, dude, statistics is dope, dude. It's so dope. We're gonna get you. We're, you and Noise both, dude. We're gonna convert you guys. Statistics is great. Yeah, I think, but but here's a here's the cool thing. I guess one thing I can say is that if you ever think, what's the main purpose of probability? Instead, I don't know about statistics, but probability. If you don't like it, just remember the only reason people cared about probability was gambling. Uh huh. Like, probability started during the days of Newton, actually. Okay. So Newton was the first person who like tried to do a probability. And it's actually there's a famous paper that he talked about like how um he can do like there was a question about like the number of dice because these games they used to play in like mm -hmm. old England and people used to go to Newton and imagine like there's this intellectual guy who's like he was like yo I got the cheat codes dude you can win the casino yeah. and then people would go to him they were like oh if you roll a bunch of dice like this way what's the probability of getting like three sixes or something I don't want to win. Yeah. And so Newton wrote this famous paper, and it turned out to be wrong, actually. Like, ah, uh -huh, okay. Paper. So he was the the very uh, first person to like start the uh, probability because of gambling, mm -hmm. but it threw out, but it developed throughout the years, and that was the main point of it. But then there's different ways of using probability, like it can be used for weather can be used for forecasting yeah. like all sorts of things i mean you guys yeah. wonder why you know airline prices are what they are and whatnot that's all probability you know they're like how likely are we to sell this flight out at this price how much do we need to raise it to you know it's super cool I, yeah you're yeah we'll, we'll, we'll get you teacup dude we'll get you on it uh what is this like some people were using physicists were beating roulette dude with physics dude that's kind of cool like what there is a way so here's the things there's I think the Mont Monte Carlo. Monte Carlo, yeah. I, you know, I still don't know what Monte Carlo is. We we need to do a whole lesson on Monte Carlo at some point. Monte Carlo, yeah. It's it's actually, like I I, I don't know why it seems super complicated. Uh, as it's probably well. the name of but it, dude. Me, send me this paper because I want to read through it. Yeah, but uh, there is a strategy to winning roulette if you're really rich, mm -hmm. uh, especially. Uh, is it that you just keep doubling down? Like every time, every time you lose, you double down. Every time you lose, you double yeah. down. Yeah. You, every time yeah. you lose, you double your money, and then you keep playing. Yeah. And then. But you have to be. You have to have enough money to keep doubling, though. <laughs> keep doubling, exactly. Yeah. And, but the thing is, like, uh, you would always, like, regardless, even if you lose, once you win, you have made uh, more money. Uh, that's actually a cool way of actually calculating why that ends up to be the case because sure. you can talk about geometric series but you always make whatever the base amount was so i if see you put ten dollars mm -hmm. and then if you lose you make it 20 you double it you make 40 oh so the it, amount you're you losing you would always make back you would always make back as long as you won the next one exactly so like ah. let's say you lose until now and then you make 160 yeah so if you add this up you get 150 Right. Oh my God! So you oh, your base. So you, you want to win more money, to, um, increase your base, uh -huh. but just make sure you can keep doubling it. So, but wait, th it, does this still work? This still doesn't work with the zero and double zero, though, right? This assumes that there's a fifty-fifty yeah. chance of winning, which there isn't. That's why zero and double zero fucks this up. Yeah. So with the with the zero and the double zero, it, this makes this probability like like less. Uh -huh. But I mean, the thing is like. Um, 
Oh, the actual math of this, like, st- the probability doesn't work out, but the reward still works out fine. Because sure. uh, you always double your money if you put it on, like, red or black. Right. Um, so, I mean, the chance of you, th- the question is, like, how likely are you to win? It's less than 50%. But the strategy doesn't say when you're going to win. It just right. says you right. win. And whenever you win, you always double your money. <laughs> so... So like it doesn't matter even if there's a one percent chance and you have infinite money. Yeah. This strategy still works. Yeah, because eventually when you hit, yeah, I get it, I get it. It's 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 yeah. regardless of the the amount it's that you're gonna lose though is is dependent on the probability. Yeah. It, yeah. So there's just how much can you play this game if you care about the probability? Like how likely wow. you're to win? It's less than fifty percent. Oh man. But are you gonna make money if you have infinite? As long as you money? leave, you have to leave on the last one that you win. That's the whole point, right? Or, or you've made base amount, so now you have all your money back. So yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. It's wild. It is wild. No, that's, that's super cool. I wonder if at a casino they start cutting you off, if they start seeing you, like, doubling they down do. every time. I think, I think they definitely do that. They do. Like, yeah. Like if, they see you using, if they see you abusing math, you're going to get killed. Well, I mean, just think about it. Maybe you're a homeless guy who has a credit card, and you're just like, fuck it. Like, I don't care about my credit score. I'm just going to keep hitting double. But here's also the thing. Remember, whatever I mean, you win. There are still the... people winning winning the living with that. But sure. But they, they are in an agreement or a contract with the casino. Oh, maybe so. Yeah, maybe because, some... like, basically the casino wants them to be an actor. Maybe oh. they can use so that... in the casino, but the the casino is bidding on like people are stupid to, who does not understand. Mathematics. Oh, interesting, if interesting. I'm, I am there. I'm definitely going to be kicked out, I guess. Right. Because I. Can't but but if you if you but if if you're winning though, you're still inspiring other people to play. Is kind of what yeah. it is. I think that's yeah. cool. Yeah, and then probably the contract. I think. I know a person who actually does that. The contract is just they will not cash out their uh, like the, their bets, uh-huh. but uh, in exchange the casino will uh, will cover all their costs for luxury travel there. Or oh, okay, something. yeah. This is what we call like whales and whatnot. Yeah, it gets comped. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. What were, you, what were you gonna say, Ramton? Thing, yeah, what were you gonna say? As well, like you can do this honestly, and I don't think the casino is gonna care. Cause here's why. Okay. Let's say you're playing the strategy. Um, I feel like we, we deviated. No, it's cool. No, I like it. I like it. I like it. It's, but it's cool. You want to follow the strategy. So typically I, I've been, I've been to casinos and there is a good chance you would see like five or six of the same color in a row. Right. So let's say on average, you can, you can double your money eight times. Okay. Um, just so like, that's how much you have. Okay. So two to the power of a is 256. Right. So whatever the, ba- the, the base that you're using, you can you have 256 times of that. Right, that's the multiplier now, that you got to go deep in. Okay. Exactly. And then so let's say if you wanted to play this game, the question is how many roulette games are you play, and what's the base amount that you're winning? Right. So like the the poker tables are probably like if you were to like do this, you can make guaranteed money. Because you're making money off of other people is what you're doing at that point. Yeah, you can win guaranteed money, but the question is, like, you always want to win your base, Uh which means you have 256 times of that, and the amount of roulette games you get to play in, like, an hour or something, where are you going to play, like, roulette for, like, 17 hours a day? (laughs) Yeah, yeah, no. Like, you know, you'll get bored eventually, and the amount of money you win is probably less than if... Minimum wage or something. Right. Uh, No, like, you would probably... I mean, if you're really rich, then you're going to win like that. But, like, you want to always exponentiate your money. Sure. This is just linearly wins you money. Right. You always make a base amount after like whatever the number of games it is. The less it is, the better. But you always keep making like 10, 10, 10. I see. So if you won't ever do that, you know, it's better to like go and do sports betting, if anything. Because mm-hmm. like if you're good at probability, sports betting is going to always give you uh, higher stakes. Okay. To like win rather than just making whatever the base amount is. Right. So. So, like, people who are really good at math, they probably are not doing... They're doing quantitative analysis for, like, a hedge fund, uh-huh. which you make more yeah, money yeah. than if you were to win base amounts. Yeah, that's the people... Yeah. Those are the millionaire billionaires just, like, managing yeah, all these... Yeah, our co- academic community, we call them traitors. Traitors! 
Yeah, no, I, I have, yeah, I have like friends in like, like for example, our, like the standard with Steve Harmon, our uh, doctoral graduate is, uh, uh, like about a half every yeah. year, leaves the academia, leaves behind for a hedge the, fund, the work that like anything, because they were lured into like mm -hmm. lured by Gene Simons. Mm -hmm. Oh, Gene Simons, yeah. Dollars to do, like, yeah, we did plant research. Jim Simons. Jim Simons, yeah, no, he's he's a, he's an interesting guy. He was a MIT graduate, uh, and he did his he did some cool stuff um, on differential geometry, actually. Oh, okay. That is, that is very highly, uh, what's it called? Uh, they they refer. There's a lot of, I guess, the papers that refer to. Nah, I mean, I'm really not the guy who actually had the name Teacup just added me. Oh wow, dude! Nice. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. God gave me a tail to keep off the flies. Wow, wow. Uh, this guy's interesting. Yeah. If you look at there's a there's a Simon's and uh, what's his theorem? There's a there's a. If you are you on Wikipedia? I'm on Wiki. Yeah. Yeah. So if you scroll up, you should see his. Uh, I think theorem. Simon has. Churn Simon's. Almost. Churn, Churn Simon's. Yes. And Shing Shen Shen. Yeah. And also Donaldson. Donaldson is another person who, like. Oh, man, dude. This is where math starts becoming hieroglyphics to me, dude. SS Chen is actually a very interesting <laughs> person. And like... also, their their work, like, has very important implication in algebraic geometry. That's cool. Topological quantum field theory. Wow. Yeah, that thing is actually really, uh, really cool because, like, the, like Lurie has a paper telling you all TQFT are just infinity functors between infinity and categories. Oh wow! Like, okay, that's a that's a meme now. Yeah. Maybe we can do like one thing because I don't know what functors are, and so like maybe we can do like a high level session at some point. Yeah, that would be cool. Yeah, I can tell you what a functor is very uh, very easily. Okay. Yeah. I, yeah, actually, I can do that. Let me try to see if I can write now. Okay, yeah, go for it. Yeah, let's try it. Yeah, so, we don't have many questions today, so I'm down just talking about stuff. Okay, so we have this thing called a category. Uh, well, this app is quite difficult because. <laughs> so does, does it move around? Or? Yeah, use F. F is how you use to to write things, and then uh, S is if you want to like. Uh, yeah, there you go. You got it. So a category. There. Let me t tell you, uh, like. Well, uh, let me just. Well, l let's disregard the set theoretic, uh, uh, set theoretic uh, obstructions to what I'm going to say next. Okay. But a category has to uh, has a set of objects. Okay. And and this sometimes we denote it as C. O B C. Okay. And the, the category itself is called C, and then they have sets of morphisms. Ooh, okay. Sometimes they are called the hum sets. What's a morphism? I know. I, uh, I I'm, I'm going to be the one. I'm going to be the one asking questions on questions here, dude. What? It's a it's so, a function. Like, for, for every like you have x and y. Yeah. In uh, that are objects in this category. Okay. And you have a hum set, a set of functions between x and the, well, from x and to y. Okay. So it maps like x to y. Yeah. So right now I'm de uh, describing this category called set okay which which are so category of sets the objects are just sets okay and the morphisms are functions any functions between sets okay and now so for example if we have y z um so we naturally would expect that there is a composition mm. A That's way of composing, mean. and uh, furthermore, oh, the composition be, right? is associative. So I say, say Ram Ramton again. Say what, what was the name? Well, the case would be X and Z, right? Just so that. Uh, sorry. Oh, for this one, yeah, yeah, you got it. Yeah. 
cool. So, like for example, you have a function here. You have a function here. Then what do you get? You will get f compose g. Uh huh. So f times g, or, or maybe just f g maps to f compose with g, and this thing is in that, right? Okay. So this is what uh, what composition is. Furthermore, there is for every object x, there is an identity mm. id of x. Such uh, that. Just one question, by the way. It, uh, X, Y, and Z are sets in here, right? Yes, that's yeah. what I'm talking about. The, like, they are... Yeah. The, this uh, Here we are talking about one example of a category. That yeah. is the category of sets denoted as SET. Okay. There are other categories, for example, AB, abelian groups. Like... Yeah. One we are talking about abelian groups. Well, they well if you think about it, they they are also sets, but yeah. they have far less morphism than the category of set, yeah. right? I know where the abelian groups are, so that that's nice to know. So a morphism groups. from abelian group G to H is a morphis uh, is a morphism in the category of sets. Like it is a function between sets, but a set, like uh, if you only consider G and H as sets, like these functions, they might, they are not necessarily homomorphisms between abelian groups. Okay, so wait, wait, wait what's, what, what's uh, the abelian group and the homomorphism thing? What's that? <laughs> uh, so uh, groups are, well, you are physicists, you know group, what groups means. Abelian is just commutative. Uh, mathematicians okay. call commutative groups abelian groups. Commutative means right that like A B is equal to B A, for yes. the for the kids that know about the commutative property. This is why you guys learn all this stuff, by the way, guys. <laughs> Eventually, you get to this. Okay. Yes. Uh, uh, well, for example, if I'm going to teach about uh, what a group is, I'm going to start with uh, uh, well, at the multiplic additive and multiplicative group of say rational or complex numbers uh -huh. and then i can tell you what commutative uh, non-commutative uh, non-commutativity is yeah well it's the, the most uh, basic non-commutative group is just gl2 you have matrices of dimension two by two like there will be situations where uh, where you uh, you can you cannot just mutate uh, commutate two elements. Okay. Or an uh, even more interesting one is SO three R. These are rotations in three dimensional spaces. They like well, SO two R is commutative, mm -hmm. but SO three R is not commutative. Okay. So uh, that actually brings me to an even more interesting fact. <laughs> that is, the uh, the uh, the functor from abelian group to group. Like uh, uh, so, here is what a functor means. A functor is going to map every object of this category into an object into the into this category, and then it's going to. Uh, uh, it's going to well i don't have to write it down so it's going to map every well i probably have to so tom uh, uh x y it's going to uh, there is a map that's hom this is a b this is group uh, this is so this functor is called f so we are associating objects and f y so you are going to associate to each uh, object that's, that is in the essential image of okay. this functor, uh, uh, like a morphism into it. So yeah, like this is what a functor means. So a functor basically is telling you, I am associating a, uh, if a category to another category in a coherent way. 
I see. Okay. And it's kind of like, it's, it's like almost like the distributive property. Is that kind of what's happening here? I'm seeing like this F is, this F hits X and it also hits Y. I'm trying to see that. <laughs> you can think about it that way. Actually, there is something very interesting about Wait, that. Is this the only a... I was asked today? Yeah. What? Did yeah. I... Teacup, Teacup's asking if his question was the only question asked today. I said, yeah. So that's, that's why we're going surprise. into it. Well, it's summer. Oh, really? Yeah, no, you're yeah. you're you're good. It's summer. Uh, yeah, well, anyways, just uh, so I'm not, let me. Uh, well, I mean, can I, just one question. So, is a functor a homomorphism? It's a homomorphism of categories. Yes, yeah. that's exactly what you are talking about. Actually, what is even more interesting is that, uh, like, why, like, so. Set X, set Y, they are morphisms like that, right? What about categories? So so here you have functors like this. And uh, maybe you have uh, isomorphisms. But sometimes, uh, like, funct uh, like, isomorphism between categories are not the correct uh, notion. You need to have natural, isomorphis natural isomorphisms. Like, the, the, there is a two... Uh, two morphism so what like if you when you think about it set is of h level that that means ho uh, h level zero that means homotopy level zero so the uh, like that that has even more more the more specific definition but uh, for example a singleton is of negative one and the empty set is of negative ne uh, negative two and then a category any category is of homotopy uh, uh, is of homotopy uh, level one and then the is category of the empty what? set yeah this one yeah what okay. about it yeah no i was just uh confirmed that it's the empty set yeah this is negative yeah. two okay, oh, okay. Yeah, well, actually, actually, let me, yeah, which uh, one's yeah, negative me... one? What? Wait, which one is which one has the homotopy of negative one? Uh, the singleton. Oh, the like singleton. A, a set of one of one element. Okay. Oh, okay. How do you so, do the so location? This thing we usually call it initial, and this thing we call it a final, because well, like like if you think about it, uh, like uh, this is a singleton. Every set admits uh, admits a unique morphism from the single uh, from the singleton into itself, right? Yeah. Okay. And it admits a unique. Uh, wait. Uh... I have a question. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, teacup, what's uh, teacup? What's your question, this, Teacup? How do you what? do the rotation in three D? Rotation in three D. Do I do the rotation in three D? I think he's talking about this. So. Yeah, so wait, wait. Uh, okay. Can you elaborate some more on what what you mean by that? I guess. Well, yeah. What 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 is this rotation three D? I guess maybe. I'll, I'll I'll explain to you what this means because uh, I've seen a lot of this in physics. So the rotation in three D because you have uh, you want to do uh, every time you do a rotation. I actually think about the um, actually uh, Hypatia. Is it okay if I just talk about? rotations for a sec before we finish off what you were talking about or yeah i i i can uh, yeah you can talk about that let okay. me write down the, uh, write, write that down yeah, yeah, for you good good okay yeah so let me so when you have um let's say uh, a vector right it points like this do you see what i'm writing now yes okay so if I want to rotate this vector, right, I can uh, think of like a hand on a clock, right? I, I mean, can just like rotate either. this and it will point to like a different rotation. Yes. Okay. Now, the thing is, in 2D, if you do rotations in a certain order, then I do them in different orders. It doesn't matter, right? Mm -hmm. And here's how. So let's say if I were to rotate this first by, let's say, 120 degrees. And then I rotate it by, 
uh, rotated backwards, let's say, 30 degrees. Hmm. Okay? So yeah. when we say it's commutative, it means the order in which we do this, it doesn't matter. So if I took this vector, let's say, and I first did it like 30 degrees mm -hmm. this way, and then I did it 120 degrees in the other direction, I would get the same exact way. Yeah. Oh, God. Okay. And yeah, teacup now, also, ro rotating, rotating counterclockwise is, is positive in all math and physics stuff. You're asking about the direction. Yeah, yeah but don't uh, don't worry about like the the, I guess uh, the way of uh, pretty much which the way you want to talk about like rotations. Yeah, the only thing is like when you do rotations, you can essentially do them either counterclockwise or clockwise, and if you have two rotations, like I, I took one counterclockwise, one clockwise. Doesn't right. matter. You could have done like two different counterclockwise. You could have done, um, you know, one. Uh, or two clockwise, two counterclockwise, one clockwise, one counter. Doesn't matter. So if you do them in whatever order, you end up at the same exact spot. Mm -hmm. Now, when it comes to 3D, so the best way of visualizing this is like, imagine you have like a sphere. Okay. In this sphere, you can think about it having like an axis of rotation around it like this. And then you have another rotation, which is about like the vertical rotation. Okay. So I can either, if I have like a vector like this, I can either rotate it like this. Mm -hmm. Or I can rotate it maybe around the other one. So it's like this. Okay. Now, with this one, it actually, um, if you do uh, like two different rotations, it you can't, you may not end up at the same exact spot. Mm, right? mm -hmm. Now, the best way of visualizing this is like try to think about like, uh, like a pen, like pick up a pen because drawing it would be very difficult. <laughs> so imagine you have a pen, you point it to yourself. Okay. You want to first rotate it uh, like there is one plate uh, plane of rotation, which is this one, the the one around like in and out like away and the other way, and the other one is like around the other pole. Like you can think of there's like two poles in here, like the north pole and south pole. There's one way that you want to go towards them, and the other one that you want to go around this plane. Okay, so let's say you have a pen. If you do a rotation, let's say 30 degrees first in the in this plane. So mm -hmm. you start from here, let's say, and then you go 30 degrees the other way. And then you do, let's say, like 60 degrees. So it would go like that. Yeah. Now, if you if you actually do this maybe the other way I, I don't uh, yeah with if you do this with the other way of doing it you're gonna end up with a vector that points kind of in a different direction now the yeah. best way of this actually visualizing is to know exactly which um, how many uh, degrees you're measuring so that you can do it more accurately uh, and in order for this to make sense as well, keep your degrees to be different as well so you don't get any, like, symmetry. Like, do a 30 followed by, like, a 60 degree in the other direction. Mm -hmm. And then the, the other way of doing it is first do the 60 degrees in, like, the polar direction and then the other 30 degrees. And then you would end up with something different. So if you do it like this then you would realize that rotations actually matter which way you do them first yeah right? okay and, and so this is what it means for rotations so in here when we talked about uh leave the idea of like a billion groups aside for now what essentially would you have is if you do rotations in different orders in 3d it matters and if you do them 
in different orders in 2D, it doesn't matter. So that's this idea of the, the group for this. We say that this one has commutation, which means you can do them in different orders. This one doesn't have computation, uh, commutation, which means you can't do them in different orders. So that's the idea. That's cool. Does that make, does that make a little bit more sense? Pika. Yeah. So I I wrote uh, on the on the right right over here side of your sphere. Uh, I I wrote uh, how it's is supposed to uh, supposed to work in two D. So the matrix is supposed to work like this. Can you see it? Which one? Let me see. Where would you, where'd you uh, put the it? The R theta of two. Oh yeah 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 right here. This one right here. And uh, also another thing to mention that is SO the SO three is actually a really interesting group, in the sense that uh, it can be realized like you can think of it like as long uh, uh, like under certain conditions once this group uh, once the rotation group fails to be commutative, it will become pathologically non commutative. Okay. Like as in. It will, it's going to contain a free group. Like, uh, free group as in, uh, uh, like, you, you are going to have, a, a like, letters. So, uh, like, for example, the free group generated by A and B, they are, like, the, the group are just A, like, the elements are strings of character, with characters A and B. And uh, also a minus one and a b minus one, such that the only relation imposed in it is the group axiom. So, uh, like this is one and this is one, and otherwise there's no other relations. Like if you think about it, abelian groups ha ha has a lot of relations. For example, they are going to tell you for all x y uh, in this group x y equals y x but here like it it's going to tell you there's no such thing as let's say a b a minus one b minus one this is called a commutator like uh -huh. this thing w will like will never be zero uh-huh okay so what this actually gives you is a paradox it's called the bana Hosky sphere doubling paradox oh god okay this one <laughs> <laughs> the this is where it comes from like uh what do you mean like the the fact that this is always non-zero that's gives rise to the bonaktarsky paradox well the thing about uh, like for example one uh, one example in the so3 that uh, that is a basis for such free group is like you you fix a transcendental number and then you rotate it along that uh, like that degree or that radian or whatever and then uh, what, uh, what if it's radian like that degree for example so yeah. basically you are uh, like if you think about it you have a transcendental number and then you keep adding it and uh, taking a congruence relation like, uh, for example, you have pi, and I'm going to tell you, uh, you are going to keep rotating along it, so n times pi, and then I'm going to tell you to take a, like, take a congruence, say, uh, 2. So, uh, you can, you will never be able to f uh, find, like, like, this thing going back to zero. Okay. Because no matter how many times you add in this, this thing stays transcendental. So yeah. there will be a remainder anyways. Okay. And that's what the free group is about. And that's what the sphere doubling comes from. Is it, th is it three group or free group? Which one? Free. 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 I think it's free. Free group. Oh, okay. Free group. Okay. Rocking in the free world with the free groups. Okay. Okay. Cool. This is a good lesson and everything. I gotta, I gotta wrap this though. But um, I, this, this was, I like this. This is a good deep dive into some really 
<laughs> far out there math. Uh, but I think te teacup, you 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 got some out of this at least, right? Yes, this this. I learned. Yes, and, uh, teacup learned. If you, if you yeah. want, uh, uh, like I, like later, you can ask me to help you with the uh, like clarifying with the uh, solution I gave last time about your problem. Yeah, if you want that's that. a good one. Yeah. Oh yeah, I meant to say thank you for that. Yeah. Yeah, if you want any clarifications from him, from him you def definitely ask Hi Hypatia about it. Cool? All right, awesome. Yes. You, get, you get a bond card. If you want, I will um, solve your problem. I, I can, like, send you this, put the solution on the office hours. Yeah, I appreciate that. As well, because we didn't get to that. Yeah, we we, we, oh, we I got we the solution thing. for it, but, you know, it's a... Uh, it's just eight, two, three. I don't know how to get it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. we'll explain it to you later. We I appreciate the inspiration. Teacup that you provided for for us to go down this rabbit hole of is this, gambling. Is this just going to be us? Is it just going to be us for over the summer? Now? No, no, no. Don't okay. worry. No, 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 no. Don't worry. I mean, like, so I do have less people asking questions over the summer, but then what I do is I start asking, I start assigning questions basically, and I start giving bonuses out to people to doing things. Were you were here for last summer, right? I was. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we get people to do to do I questions. I joined just in time for the summer thing, right? So oh, nice. Yeah, dope. Yeah. You know what? I got second. I got first place actually, and I still you didn't did. Get you did. You did. You uh, did. You did. Well, maybe you get the, You'll get it this time. But yes. I got first place goal. I know you did. You worked very hard. It was neck and neck. It was really great. Yeah. I murdered Nick. You murdered Nick. Um. But yeah, it is the summer, so it is. It less students need help. I know this just because like this week. I, I'm slammed with teaching uh, for final exams, but I know after this everything's gonna be kind of quiet. But learning doesn't stop, so we're gonna have we're gonna have a series. We're gonna have a tournament. We'll have a series of like some basic math questions you can go through, or some harder level math questions, and then some like really cool high level stuff that Hypatia and 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 Ramton can you know elaborate on and, and go through, and you guys can pick up some stuff. Yeah. I might not take place in this tournament. Oh, okay. Well, I'm not going to be able to compete with the people who can play recess games. Well, you know, I balance it out, man. I mean, like, so one, one of the one of the summers, uh, Obama won, right? He didn't play any of the games. He didn't play a single game with us. <laughs> uh, technically, last summer I won two and didn't play a single game. I know, I know, yeah. Uh, but but you got close. You got close to winning. It's I, I I was on office hours when I was on vacation. I appreciate that. I remember you were on a cruise ship and you still checked. I in. was saying, oh, yeah. oh. By the way, T Cup, let me give you a little bit. Pep talk. Yeah, so pep talk. I heard from. Uh, I I think uh, Dr. Gold said uh, you are very uh, very young. Yes. The question you know. asked will probably be our uh, will very uh, very well be possible one of our uh, one of the problem on our PhD qualifying exam. <laughs> so the exam uh, students here takes in the first year or second year in their PhD program. So like. Like, yes, yeah, so you're keep asking, class? yeah, keep asking. You're asking co like graduate college math level questions. Oh, no, that wasn't graduate college level. So yeah. That was the Algebra 2 SOL for my school. No, it wasn't. What? That, what? Was, it that was, was your Algebra, algebra 2 class? That's the Algebra 2 2015 release question. That's not Algebra 2, dog. That's not Algebra 2. Algebra 2 2015. <laughs> this is Algebra, but it's not 2. It's, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I say this is what happens in math when they start getting to high level classes. The, the the names start becoming deceptively easier, right? You're like, oh, I'm taking my numbers class. And you're like, oh, it's just numbers, right? I love my numbers class. No, dude, it's it's just not numbers. Like I remember, real analysis was harder than complex analysis. I'm like, wait a minute, shouldn't complex be harder than real? Like what what does what does that mean? Here, look at this thing I sent. I sent the link. It, it's uh, it's forty one. That's the release oh question. Oh my god, I don't I don't know about that, dude. Place is going crazy. All right, cool. That's um, gonna be on my final. That's nuts. Um, okay, awesome. Uh, thank you everyone for coming to office hours today. We had a special high level topic today, which I thought was cool. Special I appreciate. Me only day. Yeah, all good. It's summer. It's summer. You know, it, I, last summer, what I ended up doing, I actually took, like, two weeks of streaming off, if you remember. I, I did take off. Yeah, so. I do remember that. Uh, I don't think I'm going to take off. I might, I will probably have to take one week off because I'll be out, but uh, I'm just going to keep letting it rolling. You're allowed to take weeks off. I know. I need to. Well, the nice I'm thing is. you have to hog with your soul if you're one week late. Well, the nice nice thing is now we have, we have you know, I'm getting a lot of awesome help, dude. I got people like, you know, Ramton and, and Hypatia who can, you know, carry the torch when I when I don't have to, you know. 
Ooh. be here. Um, but yes, so cool. Appreciate it. Um, today's Wednesday, right? Oh, oh, we got Golden Hour tomorrow. That's cool. Oh, yeah, maybe we can talk about this. Yeah, Golden Hour's tomorrow. That's fun. Okay, dope, dude. Yeah, yeah we like Golden Hour. Okay, cool. I'll make an announcement about that for, for tomorrow. Uh, that'll be at 4 o'clock Pacific, 6 o'clock Central, 7 o'clock Eastern. I'll have students ask their questions and whatnot. Yeah, maybe we can go over some more high-level math stuff. I'm cool with it. Um, yeah. But, okay. Um... What is today? Are we gonna go to recess? We are gonna go to recess today's. Yeah, I'm. I'm a man of my word, you know, because uh, I know there there's some people waiting in the channel that want me to play Warzone. So yes, um, now what we do is we do recess, uh, where I play video games with you guys and whatnot. So today's Wednesday, which means it's Warzone. Uh, if you guys want to play Warzone, I'm gonna do that on the actual gaming stream. Uh, if you're still in the Twitch and you want to hang around, uh, it's gonna raid and take you over there. Otherwise, come back tomorrow, same time on the stream here, and we'll be doing open-ended questions about everything. So you can ask about whatever. Uh, math, science, relationships, food. Uh, relationships and food. I have a bad relationship with food. but <laughs> I hope you have a good day. <laughs> Thank you, man. I appreciate that. Okay, awesome. Again, big thank round of applause. Thank you to Ramton and Hypatia for, for donating their intelligence and brains and smarts to educating all of us today. I really, I, I do appreciate oh, it. Oh, sure they didn't take, like, Einstein's brain. I know. Well, they just went further. Wait, which and... game are you going to play? Is it Call, uh, the Call of Duty one? Call of Duty Warzone. Yeah, yeah Duty that's Duty. that's what we do on Wednesdays. Yeah, I play I play Warzone with the kids. Oh, if you look at schedule, the one I so made yes, because I was it. bored. He did make it. I technically made both of them. Yeah. Um, Mondays is Fortnite. Wednesdays is Warzone. And Friday is Roblox. But people can change it to be like Roblox, Warzone, Bob the Builder game. Yeah, I I I, I let the students also like if they want to play a different game, they can they can change it if they if they have enough points from uh from watching it on the stream. 